So namaste, hello, and a very good evening to all the members of my Pinkish family. Today, on World Menstrual Hygiene Day, we have a very special live session exclusively for you all. Today, we have with us um, Dr. Kostov Basu. Dr. Kostov Basu is a consultant uh, uh, gynecology oncologist and a specialist in robotic surgery with Narayana Super Speciality Hospital, Howrah. Narayana Super Speciality Hospitals, as you all must be knowing, are pioneers in healthcare and medical services throughout India. They have a panel of the best doctors, nurses, healthcare experts, along with state-of-art medical technology for treating the toughest of ailments and performing very successful surgeries. And all this is headed by none other than the legendary Dr. Devi Shetty. Dr. Basu has been associated with Narayana Super Speciality Hospital for the past three years and is an alumni of the prestigious Medical College of Kolkata. After completing his postgrads, he went on to do his fellowship in gynecology oncology from Tata Medical Center. He has also acquired fellowship in minimal excess surgery and is a lifetime member of Association of Gynecology Oncologists of India. Dr. Basu has an immense knowledge of treating cancer of gynecological origin like ovarian cancer, cervical cancer, uterine or endometrial cancer and vulval cancer. Today's session will be divided into two parts. In the first half, Dr. Basu will explain to us the importance of menstrual hygiene in preventing cervical cancer. And in the second part, we will have an open forum wherein our viewers can ask their questions to doctor. With that, I welcome Dr. Basu to this platform and thank you immensely to take time out to address this very pertinent challenge. Over to you, Dr. Basu. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Devangana, for a nice introduction. Uh, so, good evening to all the viewers and members of the English family. It's, uh, you're doing a great job out there, uh, especially during COVID times when people are suffering and you're still doing your uh, good job out there. So, I congratulate all of you for uh, doing I mean, a great job out there. So, uh, as you mentioned that, uh, the today's talk will be mostly uh, based on menstrual hygiene and its uh, relation with cervical cancer. So I would like to say that uh, it's really a shame for us that even in 21st century, we are celebrating such a day called Menstrual Hygiene Day. Really, it's a shame for all of us, uh, especially uh, even during COVID times, we are struggling so much with healthcare. And, uh, and this is an acute crisis. But I must tell you this uh, menstrual hygiene and related issues, these are chronic uh, issues which our third, third world countries like India are suffering for so long. And uh, so this chronic issues must be addressed. So acute crisis like COVID had to be addressed, but these chronic issues should equally be addressed simultaneously. So that is why I'm here. Uh, and uh, today is uh, World Menstrual Hygiene Day, 28th of May. So uh, I'll, I'll uh, just share a, a brief uh, presentation so that it becomes easy for you to understand what exactly is uh, menstruation and what exactly, how it is related to uh, cervical cancer and how does uh, uh, improper uh, menstrual hygiene practices lead to cervical cancer. So, uh, Devanjana, can I uh, share the screen for all of you? Please, sir. So, please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, any any uh, 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 point of time you need to interrupt, please do interrupt. And uh, uh, there is no harm. I'll, I'll, it's more of an interactive session I am planning. Okay. So, at any time, uh, any questions? No you find interruptions, but I suppose there's going to be an interaction. So, That's so right, please right. welcome and please carry on it. Okay, okay, I'll just share the uh, screen, right? So is the screen uh, visible to all of you? Devangana, please confirm. No, 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 sir. 
Not uh, yet? No. No? No, the screen is invisible, sir. Uh, just hold on. Just hold on. Now? Yeah. Now, now we are there. Right. Uh, so, guys, you have any idea why the World Menstrual Hygiene Day is observed on uh, this May 28th? Devangana, any clues you have? Uh, not exactly, sir. I'll be, I'll be enlightened to know it from you. Right. So, uh, I would like to just tell you why is it observed first. The idea behind uh, celebrating this day or marking this day is because of the social stigma we have associated with menstruation, right? So much of stigma is there with uh, the taboo and stigma, even in urban uh, world, not even I'm saying rural parts of the country, even in the urban uh, strata of population, we have a lot of taboo related to this word menstruation, right? So this is the, uh, the main idea of celebrating this day is to uh, remove, rather change the social stigma. And we all know that menstruation is a 28 day cycle, right? And uh, every 20, I mean, the cycle lasts for 28 days and the bleeding during menstruation, what happens, it lasts for five days. So you can easily imagine 28 and the fifth month is the five. So 28th of May is observed as the uh, World Menstrual Hygiene Day. You got that it now? Really, that's really an interesting uh, yeah, thing. Right, right. Even I didn't know. I had did a bit of research for this presentation and I found out. So uh, this is it. So 28th of May, the history behind choosing this date. And theme for today's, I mean, this year 2021 is action and investment in menstrual hygiene and health. So you have to act so that this taboo related to menstrual hygiene and a lot of other issues, health related issues is uh, we can, I mean, win over those issues and definitely the government and the non-government organizations should come and invest so that none of our young girls or the women of the country is deprived of menstrual hygiene and health. So. Do some action and also do some investment in menstrual hygiene. As I was just telling you that COVID is a very acute killer. Like we have an acute crisis in the country now. But we should not forget this chronic health issues, which is, which is coming out of improper menstrual hygiene practices. Because this is a slow poison, you know. Uh, it is not going to kill you in a day, but it will kill you over years and that is the reason i you should have a lot of investment into this program and uh, i guess pinkish foundation is uh, doing a lot of good work in investing into this issues of menstrual hygiene and health so i'll come to the anatomy of uh, genital organs first so that it is easy it can be easily understood by you what exactly is the female genital organ look like? This is the uterus, as you can see, marked in the picture. And uh, the lower portion of the uterus is called cervix, and the birth canal is called the vagina. And on both sides, there are ovaries and the fallopian tubes. The inner lining of the uterus is known as endometrium. You can see the mark with pink, it is called endometrium. Okay, so the bleeding from within the uterus occurs from this layer. So I'll come to the physiology, how exactly this bleeding happens. Okay, so this is the basic thing of the start of menstruation. So how does it happen? I have a, just an animated video so that it is easily uh, comprehensible by you. So this is menstruation or in other words, colloquially called as periods. So all the women in across age groups of 15 to 50, they will have a regular menstrual cycle. So this is uterus, as I mentioned you, the lining, as I told you. Okay, so this is the internal lining or the endometrium, right? So what happens is when the menstrual cycle starts, I'll just pause the video and show you. This is the lining 
the endometrial lining from where the bleeding happens. Okay, so it is a 28 day cycle. So from day one of the cycle, this bleeding starts from this endometrial layer. Okay, so this bleeding is going on and coming out of vagina. Okay, this is called periods or menstruation. So what exactly is the pathophysiology of behind this menstrual cycle? Why does this happen? So as I told you, it's a 28 day cycle. From day one, the bleeding starts, right? And the thickening of the endometrium, it comes down because of shading of the layer. So what happens is you all know that uh, there is a process called ovulation, which happens where the egg is dispersed from the ovary. And it happens around uh, day 10 to day 14 of the cycle. Okay. So this egg you are seeing, these are very small eggs which are present within the ovary. So see the, follow the video carefully. So these, ovary, these eggs are present within the ovary and you can easily see, so there are bilateral ovaries on both the sides and these are fallopian tubes and the egg are being, is being nurtured in, in this ovary. Okay, I'll just pause the video and explain sometime, something more. So this is the o, o, egg which is being growing up within the ovary and will come out or, or will burst out of the ovary and will be picked up by the fallopian tube. You can see during the initial part when the endometrium or the thickening lining has already shed the tissue, it was very thin. But on day 14, it is again coming, it is again regrowing this layer, okay? It is again regenerating. This is because of the hormones secreted from the ovary. We all know that uh, the women have two hormones in their body. One is called estrogen and other is called progesterone. So during this process of when the ovary is, when the eggs are getting, I mean, uh, nurtured, this hormones get secreted from the ovary and there is increase in thickness of this lining. This process goes simultaneously. So I'll proceed with the video. So you can see this egg is being ruptured from the ovary and is being taken up through the fallopian tube. So I'll pause the video here. So this ovum or the oocyte or the egg will rest in this fallopian tube and wait for the sperm of the partner to come and fertilize this ovum. Okay? So till the time the sperm comes and it fertilizes, it will wait in the fallopian tube. So as if this endometrial lining is getting thickened and it is get, making a fertile area for the baby to nurture. So all the mechanism in the uterus, this thickening of the lining is happening just to nurture the this embryo which will be formed after the fertilization process in between the sperm and the ovum. Okay, but if that does not happen, this endometrium will again shade off and the ovum will also be destroyed. Okay, so this is the basically the pathogenesis. So this will come if the fertilization process does not happen, it will, this layer of the uterus will automatically shade and it will start shading after the completion of 28 days of cycle. So you can see this is shading again. So the entire process, this will go on repeating and repeating every month. And this is how exactly the menstruation happens. So this is called menstruation. So uh, the family and now, uh, I mean, the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare of Government of India, they had some guidelines mentioned. It, it was 2020 uh, message from the Ministry that regarding maintenance of menstrual hygiene. So they are uh, giving a protocol where you should, they are requesting the ladies to change their sanitary napkins every four to six hours, to discard their napkins properly, to wash undergarments properly, and to wear clean and dry undergarments, and also keep yourself clean. So the entire thing which the message that the government is 
trying to give is you should have a in the, the menstrual hygiene should be very much maintained during specifically during the menstrual periods okay the reason behind is that if you are not maintaining hygiene especially if you are suppose you are over doing uh, if you are wearing your sanitary pads over the dedicated 4 to 6 hours maybe around 8 to 10 hours there is a change of ph in the vaginal flora and what happens is this change of ph will attract more pathogens like bacteria fungus into the vaginal tract and it will cause an infective atmosphere so it will ultimately it will result in reproductive tract infection okay so this reproductive tract infection will persist and it will become a chronic one every time you will face some excessive discharge some pain some abnormal bleeding so this can happen because of improper hygiene so not only you can understand this menstruation thing can affect a girl's life young girl's life not only health wise but also a lot of social issues come when the young girl especially a school going or college going girl is suffering through this stigma right the girls may suffer from discomfort shaming and they generally try to refrain from this uh, general routine activities because of this shame they could not participate because of the pain because of the discomfort and so they are missing a lot of time in education and even uh, the working class of women who are in a in the age of uh, age group uh, of office going or working so they are missing out a lot of uh, office work and they are losing income so not only health wise but socially also they are this ladies this women are losing a lot of things so you must be aware this uh, of this statistics it was uh, from the ministry of health and it it has shown that only 12% of women have access to sanitary napkins in india you can imagine 355 million women are there who are menstruating every month and out of which 42.6 million that is 12% are having access to the sanitary napkin this is i mean uh, very shameful for a country like india and even we can see that 71% of the adolescent girls they are absolutely unaware of what exactly menstruation is during the first period so this was a study done in the uh, four states of tamil nadu uttar pradesh rajasthan and west bengal and you can see the data so this is really shameful this data are should be looked upon and we should rather give stress on this data in future so as i was talking that this process of unhygienic menstrual practices like we have seen lot of uh, unhygienic practices are there uh, people i mean ladies uh, use uh, clothes use uh, bamboo shoots use leaves and a lot of other issues are there and these will cause what happens is the vaginal flora which is there you can see this is the vagina there will be a lot of changes in the vaginal flora especially the change is the ph okay so this ph change what will it will cause an imbalance in the bodily flora so there is normal healthy bacteria present in the vaginal flora and that will be destroyed by this unhygienic practices so when the local bacteria which are preventing infection are present so that will cause harmful bacteria to come in and will cause some changes which will over time may cause a cancer of the cervix so this is the cervix as i told you the lower part of the uterus and this is the cancerous tumor in the cervix so this can happen over time so why am i talking about because you uh, i was just telling that lot of other things can also happen due to unhygienic menstrual practices but my focus was mostly on cervical cancer the reason is this figures you can see the deadly figures so commonly faced cancers in women 
our breast cancer, cervical cancer, oral cavity cancer, ovarian cancer, as, it, as you can see in the slides. But the cervical cancer, second in the list, it is almost 16.5%. So almost you can see the figure 96,009. So it is almost 96,000, almost a lack of uh, patients are suffering from cervical cancer. Okay, and you can easily imagine that this is the 2018 data from WHO, and this is the number of cases every year. Okay, so this is 2018, there was 96,900, almost a lack of one lakh of cases, and this was the same data of mortality, that means number of deaths. So almost 67,000 deaths out of, you can imagine, out of one lakh population of cervical new cases of cervical cancer you can see there are 67000 deaths annually so it is the second most leading cancer female cancer which causes death so it's a very deadly cancer and see approximately 185 women are dying every day and approximately eight women are dying every hour and already eight minutes have passed since my speech has started and a lady has died of cervical cancer so this data is very alarming right so and this should be taken care of and this should be looked upon with very sincerity because these figures are really harsh okay we are talking a lot of things about covid now but this number of deaths are also not less right so what exactly is cervical cancer and how does this happen? So as I told you that cervical cancer is a result. One of the reasons is, as I told you, is um, uh, no, I mean, not good. Uh, so the main reason behind this is the human papilloma virus. Okay. And this human papilloma virus is a virus which is generally commonly present in the vaginal flora. It is not abnormal. So it is present after sexual intercourse with your partner. This is generally present. But what happens is when you have an unclean vagina or due to unhygienic menstrual practices or because of diabetes or because of steroid use and a lot of other things, I'll come to the risk factors, this area becomes susceptible to this viral infection. Okay, so this is a DNA virus, as you can see in the picture, the infection by the HPV DNA comes in, this is the cervix, so it goes in, but because of good immunity of the patient or the person, the virus cannot cause any damage. So this virus gets out. And almost see 90 percent of the patients heal within two years time because they can clear off the virus because of their own good immunity but sometimes because of unclean uh, menstrual practices because of as i told you multiple sex partners because of low socioeconomic status because of low immunity poor nutrition this hpv dna virus can cause a lot of harm because they can stay in the system the body cannot clear it off and what it have what it does is it binds it goes into the cell see here it was not within the cell but here it has gone within the cell and it has integrated with the human dna and it will cause multiple replication and form cancer so this is how the process of cancer starts okay so you can see from the infection to cancer, there is a, a phase of 5 to 20 years. So this is HPV infection and these are pre-cancerous stages. You can see these are pre-cancerous stages and finally it becomes cancer. So in between infection and cancer, there's almost a 15 to 20 years of latent phase where the cancer change is happening. But still cancer has not happened. So in between this time period, if we can screen the patient, 
we can catch the patient even before the patient has got cancer. Okay, so this is a very important thing with cervical cancer, which is not there in any other type of cancer. So that cervical cancer can be easily detected in a very early stage and can be cured. Okay, so what are the causes? As I told you, the main cause is HPV virus infection. So this is the main cause. And the HPV virus infection, why this virus infection is persistent? Because of all these risk factors. One is smoking, one is early marriage, prolonged use of birth control pills, low immunity as I mentioned, multiple childbirth as that used to happen in our previous generations, unprotected sex, multiple sex partners. So ultimate cervical cancer change is caused by HPV virus, but all these changes are facilitated by these factors. And also unclean menstrual hygiene practices. So warning signs, what are the warning signs of cervical cancer? How would you understand that you can have a cervical cancer? You are having bleeding after intercourse with your partner. You are having bleeding between periods. You are having bleeding after menopause. Sometimes you have a prolonged menstrual cycle. You are having foul smelling vaginal discharge and you are having pain after intercourse with your partner. All these are warning signs and you should visit your doctor because you are having this sign. These are not normal. Okay. So when you visit your doctor and your doctor sees the cervix by an examination and he finds this kind of change is there. So the first thing he will do, he'll do a punch biopsy from this area. So just a pinch, it is not much painful just like a uh, uh, feel of a pinch will have this tissue biopsy from this area and we can diagnose whether you are having a cervical cancer or not a lot of people will have myth that this biopsy from this area will cause spread of the tumor right but it, it does not exactly cause spread of the tumor but rather it is the only mode of diagnosis of cervical cancer so how can we prevent cervical cancer? As I told you that cervical cancer takes a long time to happen from infection to cancer. So there must be some things to prevent cervical cancer. One is to adopt. So one is a primary prevention and other is a secondary prevention. So what about primary prevention? So we can adopt safe sexual practices. We can use barrier contraceptives timely treatment of uh, the reproductive tract infection and there is a vaccination against this HPV virus. And what about secondary prevention? Secondary prevention is like it will aim at detecting the disease in early stage so that in early stage we can pick up the disease and it cannot progress into cancer. So how to, do we do that? We have three main uh, techniques of doing that. One is a pap smear test other is the HPV DNA test and lastly there is a colposcopy test. So all these tests can screen the patient and determine that this patient may progress into cancer in future. So this is how we prevent the cervical cancer. So as I told you this is pap smear taking a, just a swab from the cervix. Okay so how do we so what is exactly screening? Screening is looking into healthy population so you have not have cancer till now you are a healthy woman so you should be undergoing this pap smear test every three years from 21 to 30 years old and even after 30 to 65 years old you should continue your pap smear test along with that you can do a hpv dna testing as well you can directly test the virus so this pap smear and hpv dna test should be done to all women who are like married or sexually active. They should be undergoing a pap smear test. Whether cancer or not, this patient, these are not patients, these are basically healthy ladies or healthy women who should undergo this test. So if some abnormality we find in this pap smear test, then what we do, we do an examination called colposcopy or we do a zoomed imaging of the cervix by a machine called colposcope 
and we see whether there is abnormality or not so this is normal this is uh, some early pre cancer changes this can be seen these are high grade changes and this is cancer so, so from normal to cancer as i told you it takes at least 5 to 10 years so in this time we can do pap smear we can do colposcopy we can do hpv dna and detect the cancerous changes very early as i told you there is a primary prevention of cervical cancer by giving hpv vaccine okay so mainly we uh, have this vaccine two types of vaccine are there targeting the hpv 16 and 18 types uh, one bivalent vaccine and one uh, quadrivalent vaccine and the recommendation is from 9 to 14 years and uh, so ideally all the females who are not exposed to hpv infection that means who are not sexual not yet sexually active or not yet married they should be targeted but the best age group is 9 to 14 years okay but you have to um, uh, i mean understand that vaccine is not a replacement for cervical cancer screening because even if the vaccine is given it is given against the 16 and 18 virus but there are lot other strains which can still cause cervical cancer so even if you are vaccinated the pap smear screening and the hpv dna screening should go on okay so this is the stage of cervical cancer initially it is confined within the uterus and generally it progresses it goes out of the uterus it spreads to other organs and so so how to treat the pre cancerous tumor as i told you there is a pre cancerous tumor it can be treated by opd based procedures so these are mostly pain, painless procedures which can be done in opd itself okay but when that there is invasive cancer these are all pre cancer stage you can do a cryo surgery you can do leap surgery these are all techniques which can be done in opd itself you don't need admission while for invasive cancer when cancer already has happened for stage 1 early cancer surgery is option we can use laparoscopic surgery we can use robotic surgery maybe she may require radiotherapy depending on the biopsy report and in stage 2 and stage 4 we will require chemotherapy and radiotherapy so what about prognosis so in early stages if we detect the cancer i mean if we detect the tumor in a pre cancer stage the patient is 100% cured in early stage it is almost 80 to 90% curable so it's it's a good amount i mean you can understand for a cancer 100 out of 100 women 90 patient will survive if is in the early stage even in advanced stage then the late stage stage 4 stage 3 you can understand that the survival is as high as 30 to 40% so the crux is that the cervical cancer is a cancer which we can if we can detect in early stage we can have a good amount of survival benefit we can have a good amount of cure to this we can give cure to this patient right and this all starts from a good uh, menstrual hygiene practice so if you have a good menstrual hygiene practice you will never ever have this cervical cancer okay so thank you thank you for your kind attention so i think devangana we can uh, now go on and take yeah. questions yeah thank you so much it was a wonderful explanation and it was uh, really very uh, you know enlightening we learned a lot thanks thanks a lot for that now we will start taking questions from our viewers we have uh, ms sarika gupta here she is asking you what are the symptoms of cervical cancer and the best way to cure them right so when the cancer has already formed you will only have symptoms right so unless and until the cancer is formed you won't have any symptom as i told you there is a lot of early pre cancer stages but you won't have any symptom in the pre cancer stage so that can only be detected by pap smear or colposcopy so once and only you have symptom you will come to or you will consult a gynecologist or oncologist or whatever so common symptoms are like you will have abnormal bleeding so which is not related to periods so it will be not cyclical like in between periods sometimes your periods are over and again after 2 3 days you are having bleeding excess foul smelling discharge which is not socially acceptable and sometimes you will have very low back pain okay sometimes you will have burning sensation during passing urine 
So these are common symptoms you can have when you have a cervical cancer. And especially, there's also, I just missed one point, if the ladies who have attained menopause, still they are bleeding, even after menopause. Suppose two years have passed since she had attained menopause, even after that she is having bleeding. So that is an alarming sign. You should not sit at home and observe. You should consult a menopause immediately. Thank you. I hope uh, you are satisfied with the answer and that is that was a wonderful answer from Dr. Azza. Anyways, the next question is coming from Aditi Kulkarni Kurane and she asks, many women are scared to get checked. How can this fear be removed? I think a very, very valid question and a very, uh, you know, very valid point. I mean, this is what we are facing even when we are dealing with menstrual hygiene. Uh, people are skeptical, there are taboos, uh, even in, in case of cancers and everything, people are skeptical, women are skeptical, they don't want to go ahead and get themselves checked. So how can that be removed? Right, so uh, the only answer is like making awareness, more and more awareness. Right. Like I said, you can imagine, I'll just give you an example, uh, way back in 1990, when we were in school, you can't imagine a uh, a movie coming into a cinema hall with the name Padman. Right. Uh, it would never be socially acceptable in 19. But in 2015, it was possible and it was cleared by Spencer Board. Right. So people are getting much and much more aware. So I hope uh, they, the only answer is making yourself aware. So the lady who asked me the question, if, we, if she can, if she has uh, listened to the talk, uh, when he, I mean, he had followed the talk, and I think she can pass on this message to at least four of her friends. And this way, this, uh, this will move on. So, I think uh, just talking with friends, passing on the message, this is the only way. There is no other way. Right. Um, I think prevention is better than cure, like you said, yeah. doctor. And uh, what better way to prevent rather than getting checked? So get yourselves checked, be aware, and uh, that's how I think the taboos need to be removed. We need to be more progressive. We need to take care of ourselves and our health. And that is how I think we need to go ahead. And now we have a question from Abhilasha Jain. Uh, Abhilasha asks, uh, sir, I would like to know if anyone suffering from PCOD, PCOS, suffer from uh, cervical cancer as well. I can uh, relate few symptoms like continuous bleeding, regular discharge, pain, etc. So what she basically uh, wants to say is these are the uh, symptoms that are there in PCOD, PCOS. So right. can right. they again also indicate uh, so, towards uh, cervical cancer? Right. So there is no relation as such with polycystic ovarian disease with cervical cancer. Totally they are unrelated. But sometimes symptoms are do I mean, resemble each other. Right. But uh, definitely, if you are having persistent symptoms, which is not uh, getting cured by medicines of PCOS, we should get a pap smear done uh, to check yourself whether you are having that cervical cancer change or not. Okay, so, I think in that case, uh, the screening test should be definitely be So, uh, whatever the condition is, screening is a must. So every three years, pap smear, and if you're above 30, if I haven't uh, greatly mistaken, 30 right. to 65, uh, the other one after five, every five years, right? So after 30 years, you can have a pap smear and HPV DNA test. Because H the right. combined right. test has a um, better sensitivity, so the results will be better. Correct. So we have another question from Deepika Yadav. Deepika says, surgery is the uh, is surgery the only option for cervical cancer, or can it be cured by medicines? And at what stage will it be cured? Right. If so, so uh, yeah, so on, we only operate cervical cancers when it is confined within the uterus. That is stage one. Once it has gone beyond the uterus, it has come out of the uterus. So there is no point in operating because the patient will need radiotherapy. And we have seen from our evidences that if you do surgery beyond stage one, and if you give radiotherapy, 
the results are same. So, and even after doing surgery, you have to give radiotherapy. So, for stage two and beyond, if you do surgery, you will need radiotherapy as well. And the results are comparable with only radiotherapy only. So, we do not want double mode of treatment. So, we try to avoid unnecessary extra financial burden as well as physical uh, burden on the patient because both therapies, dual therapies will cause a physical burden on the patient. Sure. Surgery sure. in the radio therapy will cause a lot of uh, physical comorbidities to the patient. So that is why early stage, stage one, surgery, beyond that, generally radio therapy and last stage or final stage, stage four, we generally do not give radio therapy, it is treated only by chemotherapy. Okay, thank you so much. Our next uh, question comes from Meena uh, Kent. Her uh, uh, her question is: When girls when girls should be vaccinated after start of their menstruation as a pre prevention for cervical cancer? Is vaccine safe in early okay. age? What she what she means to say is: Is vaccine safe at an early, early age? Can this this vaccine cure it for lifetime? Right, a good, very good uh, question uh, you asked. So, uh, what happens is, uh, the, as I told you, the vaccines are made against four high risk viruses. So, human papilloma virus, there are 100 strains. Okay, like we are now very accustomed with COVID strains, like a lot of COVID strains, American strain, UK strain, Indian strain, Singapore strain. So, likewise, human papilloma virus has 100 strains. The vaccine is made against only four high risk strains, which are mostly known to cause cervical cancer. But there are 96 other strains as well. Okay, so even if you are vaccinated, you are absolutely not cured for lifetime. As I told you, screening should go on. Okay, the other question is whether it is safe in early age. The best age to vaccinate is 9 to 14, because in, in this time period, the antibody production in a young girl is maximum okay so the immunity which will be achieved against cervical cancer will be maximum if we can vaccinate in the time period 9 to 14. Mm -hmm. okay but even beyond that a school going girl who has suppose which is who is 20 years of age she can also be vaccinated <laughs> even 28 year old lady who is married, she can also be vaccinated. But problem is, once the HPV exposure has happened, the efficacy of the vaccine won't be there. Okay, so vaccine can be given at any age, but the efficacy of the vaccine, which is found giving administering it at 9 to 14 age, is the best. Okay, so uh, next is from Monica Amulya Moria. She right. says, how can we keep vagina healthy and hygienic before and after menopause? Right, so during the reproductive age group, when you are having a, a menstrual cycles, uh, it is best to use, not use any like uh, detergent or soap or uh, any other chemicals or uh, whatever is available in market to clean the vagina. I would suggest just clean running water is enough, good enough to clean the vagina. Because what happens is, because of excessive cleanliness sometimes, on the other side of the spectrum, on one side there is absolutely no clean measures, and on the other side there is something called uh, overactive and high, being hyper and uh, getting more and more clean. So that will cause loss of beneficial bacteria which is present. So there are a lot of commensal bacteria which is present in the vaginal flora, which is helping you preventing this HPV infection. So if you are using chemical, there will be change in pH of the vagina. And once there is change in pH of the vagina, this HPV virus will become more and more uh, offensive and it will uh, get a medium to get into the uh, 
that is the women's body okay so it is so, better uh, not to... i mean there are so many uh, you know personal hygiene products which are uh, available in the market like intimate hygiene products which right. are like uh, i would not like to name any but then right. there are certain products which are meant to wash uh, your intimate areas do you think that, th that those should be avoided as well yeah i guess so because it's not needed it's not needed whatever okay. your body if your body immunity is good if your nutrition is good it can easily fight the pathogens which are coming into your vaginal flora because it is exposed to the exterior it has to come okay. so there is no doubt in that you can't keep it always clean but whenever you are like using washroom or whatever uh, practice you are having so you can clean the perineal area with running water that's the best thing so, so clean I, simple I, running water clean simple running water okay that will be the best thing because more and more chemical you are using or whatever medium you are using your ph will change a lot of advisement are given that ph balance is maintained with this thing and that but still i would suggest that uh, normal bacterial flora which is there it should be there because it is your what is own bacteria and these are beneficial bacteria it is helping you out correct so more if you are using chemicals that will kill those bacteria as well so we have uh, another lady uh, one of our family members uh, sagrika maiti she's asking my mother is 49 years old but she still goes on bleeding tremendously and no test is confirming cervi cervical cancer as of now which test do you recommend right so first thing is that uh, we have to do a ultrasound examination ultrasonography whether there is any tumor inside and if suppose and we have to look uh, her clinically examine her clinically whether any tumor is in the cervix or not so if we find any cervix cervical tumor we can take a biopsy of it still if we do not find we can go for a better imaging like a ct scan or a mri mm -hmm. and we can find out with what exactly is the thing still if ct scan mri does not show anything so we can better we'll do a procedure called hysteroscopy and biopsy from within the uterus we'll scrape off the endometrial layer the inner lining as i told you then we can by going into the uterus through a camera it's called hysteroscopy and we'll see the entire layer and we'll scrape it off and send it to the lab sometimes what happens is we can have a endometrial cancer it is not related to cervical cancer we can have a endometrial cancer okay so since this is approaching in a so we have uh, so many people saying thank you to you there are so many people saying good evening, good evening. <laughs> thank you so much thank you all for joining us today it was wonderful it was wonderful having you all today uh, can we take a few more questions or uh, do we yes, have we any more do. questions yeah. or can we can we just uh, uh, do we wrap this up now i think doctor has uh, spent uh, quite a good amount of his precious time with us we have another question from abhilasha jain can we clean the intimate area using wet wipes if not possible to clean with water especially when we are out traveling yeah that's a very valid question because uh, for us ladies it's uh, really difficult to find a good wash place so i would, I would suggest not, not using wet wipes rather using uh, the uh, dry wipes or the just uh, toilet paper or whatever you have it would be okay. better so keeping it dry would rather help in preventing infection rather than using a okay. wet okay okay acha so we have another question from seema maheshwari she is asking hum apni lifestyle kaise rakhe jisse cervical cancer ka khatra kam ho jaye so i think you already elaborated on that but then it will be a nice reminder again yeah fir se main thoda sa aapko bata deta hu ki ek cheez hai ki cervical cancer dekha gaya hai ki smoking se badhta hai there is a chance of cervical cancer with the smoking so definitely you should not smoke second is uh, uh, multiple sex partner you should have try to avoid you should have uh, safe uh, sexual practices aap very uh, contraceptive use kar sakte hain second is aapka uh, 
जैसे डायबिटीज अगर है तो डायबिटीज को कंट्रोल करना है अगर यू आर हैविंग सम सम लॉट ऑफ पेशेंट्स यूज स्टेरॉयड टैबलेट्स बिकॉज ऑफ सम अदर डिजीज तो उनको हम बोलेंगे कि रेगुलर आप पैप्स में टेस्टिंग करो डेफिनेटली बिकॉज यू हैव अ चांस ऑफ एक्वायरिंग सर्वाइकल कैंसर तो और न्यूट्रिशन गुड न्यूट्रिशन देयर नो अदर थिंग्स we have another very interesting question from abhilasha jain actually this was also going on in my mind is the use of tampons menstrual cups or reusable pads safe to use because um, just as you were discussing doctor that uh, we need to change our sanitary napkins every 4 hours right uh, but uh, at times uh, when we are using tampons or menstrual cups that is also necessary to you know Uh, empty them or change them every four hours, but maybe we are not always in a situation where that can be done. So, is do they do they pose a threat? Yeah, there is has been evidences with this tampon because sometime in seventies uh, or eighties uh, in UK, tampon was totally banned for a period of five to ten years because of they cause a syndrome called toxic shock syndrome. So, what happened is lot of uh infection happened because of using tampon and keeping it for long time and for bacterial infection called staphylococcal infection it uh, used to happen and it used to cause uh, urinary infection it used to cause that cause blood stream infection okay so uh, and finally the patient used to land up into septic tank so i would say that if you are using tampons definitely definitely it should be after the time period which is mentioned in the packet over some time to four hours or maybe eight hours depending on the material hygroscopic material which is being used so uh, you should follow that time period not keep it beyond but for uh, menstrual cups uh, it is uh, being used especially in the rural areas it is advocated because they are economically much cheaper uh, so uh, it can be uh, rather uh, Because it is made of silicon or something uh, very uh, biodegradable, uh, bio-friendly, friendly material, I would say that is okay. But for tampons, I would uh, go against it because it will cause a lot of infection. Because pad which you are using, it is on the external part, external side. So even if you are not changing it, some rashes or something will happen. But tampons are uh, causing a lot of especially if it is causing cervical cancer. Okay, so uh, what about uh, we have Sajid Ashraf saying very nice, Rajesh Agarwal saying thank you sir for those informations. Thank you all for being with us. Sapna Kumari says interesting and informative topic. Thank you, Sapna Kumari. Uh, Gautam Banerjee says thank you so much, Irfan. Okay, uh, so that goes out to Narayana Speciality Hospital, Super Speciality Hospital. Neelam Vijay Patwal, very interesting session. Thank you, Neelam. Uh, Gautam Banerjee again says very interesting indeed. Thank you, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Sanjit Singh, great work. Thank you, and all these thank yous are going to the doctor. <laughs> the Surendra uh, Surendra uh, Jain says very interesting. Subhash Bajaj says great. Thank you, thank you so much, everybody. Soma Maheshwari says good. Seema Maheshwari, I'm so sorry. Seema Maheshwari says good. Monica Mulya Maria says thanks, Pinkish. Thank you, Maria, and thank you, doctor. Uh, Sagrika Maithi says thank you, Rivajana, for this nice session. Thank you, Sagrika, for being there with us. Poonam Lamba says thank you, sir. That goes out to you, sir, again. So I think uh, we've had a wonderful session today, and it was very educative. It was very informative, and uh, thank you, doctor. Thank you, uh, Narana Hospital, Narana Super Speciality Hospital, Howrah. Any questions on your side, Devangana? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> that was an honor for me to host this show, and a very, very big thank you to my entire Pinkish family. But before we leave, uh, I would like to remind everybody that if any one of you, uh, Pinkish Foundation says lots of doubt about cervical cancers were uh, cancer were clear today. Perfectly, perfectly said. Uh, that was really right. Uh, Bilasha uh, Jain says thank you, sir, for the lovely session, and thanks Pinkish for conducting this session. Thank you, Bilasha Jain. So before uh, you know, we leave, I would just like to remind you all, or I uh, would like to uh, tell you all that 
anyone 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 from you uh, from our viewers anyone from our pinkish family if you would like to uh, have a consultation whether virtual or physical with dr kostav basu you can please contact on the uh, on 700 3550232 right uh, so you can please contact on uh, the said number i'll repeat it again 7003550232 uh, you can contact and you can either uh, book for a virtual consultation or a physical consultation mai ek baar hindi mein fir se repeat kar deti hu aap mein se agar koi bhi dr kaushal basu ke ke sath consultancy karna chahte hain to please aap 7003550232 pe call kijiye aapko dikhega hamare screen ke niche bhi yahi number scroll ho raha hai kindly note kar lijiye if you would like to have a consultation please do give them a call on this number and thank you dr basu thank you from the bottom of my heart from the entire pinkish family and the uh, pinkish team a lot of pleasure talking to you and thank you all the viewers for uh, spending so much time for your kind attention listening to my slides and for the wonderful questions so it was a pleasure having all of you thank you thank you thank you so much and thank you the entire pinkish team and uh, and my entire pinkish family stay safe stay healthy thank you again namaste